AMD and Nvidia graphics card pricing is getting crazy right now, and only some of it is in a good way. We have the cheapest new GPU prices for each model and their performance figures to determine right now which are the best graphics cards to buy. I'll be making Nvidia and AMD suggestions at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, covering pricing, frame rate, and a cost per frame analysis to determine if the GPU you are eyeing is worth pulling the trigger now or potentially pivoting to a different model, especially as some cards are literally a stupid option compared to faster cards selling for significantly less. And stay tuned to the end because we're also going to recommend GPUs at up to $350, around $500, $800, and $1,000 or more, especially in the wake of the RX 7900 XT and XTX. It's an exciting time to be a gamer, and I'm going to make sure that the money you're spending is getting you the most performance possible right now. Let me explain. But before we get into that, let me show you something I think you're really going to like. The fundamental reason why I make videos for you to enjoy is because I love to learn. And if you're watching this, you probably love learning too, about topics and hobbies that really excite you. But I'm not talking about this kind of learning. I'm talking about the new wedgie-free way of learning that's better for your brain and your butt. I've been using Skillshare for about six months now, and I can't recommend it enough, especially when it's free. Animation, film and video, web development, and many more categories with thousands of classes to choose from, taught by some of the best professionals and industry leaders like advanced video editing with Premiere Pro by Jordi Vanderput, which has helped me advance my ability and make better content for you guys. So whatever your passion, your career aspirations, or your business idea, browse the classes below and start your journey today with a free 30-day trial of Skillshare. But this offer is only for the first 1,000 people to click on the sponsor link in the video description. So get them while they last and make today the day you get on your path to success. So the place that we're going to start in this video is to explain how we're going to do the calculation and what GPUs we're looking at, what the prices are and how they're going to relate to performance in your computer and the games that you play. So what I want to do is draw your attention to this. This is our cost per frame analysis for every single RTX 3000 and RX 6000 GPU that has been released over the last couple of years. We've also included the new RTX 4080 and the 4090 in this calculation. So what we have here is the card itself, the MSRP for the card with some estimation for say like the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte that never officially got an MSRP. The next column over, we have the links for all the cards that we have the prices for right here. And we've got the pricing for the actual GPUs that we found the brand new pricing that you can get right now. And some of these straight off the bat look pretty good, but some of them are atrocious. We're not even going to comment on the RTX 4080 and 4090 being well above their MSRP. Well, at least for the 4080, it's come down a bit, but $2,187.94 for an RTX 4090 is a stupid amount of money. But essentially what we can do with this column is take the price of the graphics card and then divide it by the amount of frames that it gets in a given resolution. Now, the resolution and the frames per second that you see here is across 12 different games. So if you're playing something like CSGO, the number will probably be significantly higher than this for every single resolution for the given card. But if you're playing something like Cyberpunk, the number will probably be lower. But this is going to be a good average for what you may want to achieve across the games that you might play. And that is the entire reason why we do a cost per frame analysis, because essentially you want to find out if at 1080p in the games that you play, if you're going to get 100 frames per second, how much is each and every one of those frames costing you because from that calculation you can then compare it to a different GPU that you may be able to purchase, one that may be even better value. So now that you understand what a cost per frame analysis is and how we're going to be using it today, there is one thing that I want to kind of highlight how it may be misinterpreted or not used correctly. Because the temptation with a cost per frame analysis is to have a look at the resolution and only stick to what is the lowest price per frame. But the thing that you really do need to consider on top of that is what is your minimum frame rate that you're willing to accept? If we take a look back at the data right here, we can see that the RTX 3050 is one of the best 4K gaming GPUs for price to performance in terms of value. But then you realize it only generates about 33 frames per second on average across our test suite. That is not an acceptable level of gaming performance, at least in my opinion. So the way that you need to interpret this data is to have a look at what your minimum acceptable frame rate is and then focus on cards with the best price to performance given that frame rate. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing for 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Which are the best cards in those resolutions that will give you a good gaming experience at the best value for those cards. But before we get onto that, there is one thing that I do want to highlight. Current new prices versus MSRP, because in some circumstances, 
they are way above MSRP even multiple years later after the crash. And that is a bit of a stupid situation to be in and a bit of a sorry affair. But it does highlight which cards to fundamentally avoid because there are some absolutely stellar options, especially in the mid to low end. So let's take a look at new prices versus MSRP. As you can see with AMD across the board, nearly all models are pretty much below the MSRP by a good 20%, 10%, 30%, something like that. Other than the RX 6800 XT, which ironically the cheapest one that we could find right now is $879.99, which is over $200 more than its MSRP multiple years ago. But this is kind of offset a little bit. When you take a look at something like the RX 6950 XT, which is $799.99, that is less than the 6900 XT and the 6800 XT, which is another reason why you should be looking at videos like this. For buyers of the 6800 XT, I would be very upset if you spent $879.99 thinking that that's the card that you need for your performance level, when for less money, you could get significantly more performance. The 6950 XT is is actually one of the top rasterization cards that you can buy right now, other than the 4090 and 4080. And speaking of Nvidia, for their new prices, things are a bit all over the place. Here we can see that nearly no cards are currently selling for their MSRP or lower until you get to around the 3080 12 gigabyte mark with a question mark MSRP. So even that's not really a solid representation of that. So you're looking to get to the 3080 Ti territory before you start looking at cards with prices lower than their MSRP. So now that you know how prices relate to MSRP at the moment, let's take a look at the most important part of this video. Which are the best GPUs to buy right now in terms of price performance given a resolution? Exactly how you would buy a GPU. Let's start with the most popular, 1080p. And here we go. As you can see from anything from the RX 6600 all the way up to the RTX 3090 Ti, you're going to get an excellent 1080p experience. With the 6600, you're kind of just below what I would call a mid to high refresh rate, but something like the RX 6700 XT would easily get you that, about 152 frames per second in the test suite. For Nvidia to get about the same performance as those two cards, you would be looking at the RTX 3060 compared to the 6600, and also the RTX 3070 or 3070 Ti compared to the RX 6700 XT. And that's what we're going to determine with you today. What is the best card to focus on right now? What has the best price to performance in 1080p? Let's take a look at the next chart. At 1080p, the cost per frame analysis looks like this. Essentially, what you want to be doing is having a look at the resolution that you want to target, how many frames per second that you want to achieve, and then select the card with the best price to performance in terms of frame rate. And that's exactly what we have right here. With the RX 6650 being an excellent option for 1080p mid to high refresh gaming, generating on average 132 frames per second across the test suite at a price of $1.89 per frame. That is excellent compared to pretty much all of the competition. The closest match from Nvidia would be the RTX 3060 Ti at $2.77 per frame. It is almost a dollar more expensive per frame compared to the RX 6650 XT, but generates just shy of about 10% more frames. But then when we take a look at the actual new pricing of them, the RX 6650 XT is selling for $249.99 right now and almost as cheap as the RX 6600. The 3060 Ti in comparison Comparison is pretty much locked onto its MSRP of $400. And that is the way that you need to look at this. 10% more frames is fantastic, but it doubled the price. And that seems to be exactly where AMD is winning right now. They are offering a much better price to performance than Nvidia given a price point. And it's pretty much across the stack, leaving the only reason to buy Nvidia pretty much because of their software suite and CUDA support. If you are purely just interested in gaming and streaming, I would highly recommend that you look into some of these AMD cards. They are a staggering price at the moment, which is also reflected in our 1440p results. For AMD, pretty much all of their cards will support a decent 
1440p experience, with the higher end cards giving you a much better experience, especially for high refresh rate gaming. From anything from the 6600 generating on average 74 frames per second at 1440p, but if you want to step up to the high refresh rate gaming experience, you'd be looking at more of the 6800, 6800 XT or higher from AMD. For Nvidia, pretty much anything will support a decent 1440p experience apart from the RTX 3050 that is teetering on the edge of an acceptable gaming experience for most gamers. So you'd be looking at more like the RTX 3060 to get a decent 1440p experience at 60 FPS. But again, stepping up to the high refresh rate gaming, you'll be looking at more of the RTX 3080 level of performance. So how do they compare to one another? What is the best price to performance for a 1440p experience? Let's take a look at that now, which also shows that the RX 6650 XT is a stunning value at the moment, even at 1440p. You'd be looking to get around 92 frames per second at a value of $2.72 per frame at 1440p, which is now the best value GPU at 1080p and 1440p, while still providing an acceptable gaming experience. For Nvidia, the RTX 3060 Ti is still the top contender at this price point at this resolution at $3.76 per frame. But again, it is $1 more expensive per frame than the RX 6650 XT. For Nvidia, looking at more the high refresh rate option for 1440p, the RTX 3080 10 gigabyte and 12 gigabyte are kind of your good starting points for something like that. Getting around the 144 frames per second average for 1440p. But prices here are getting a little bit weird. The RTX 3070 Ti at $5.89 per frame. The RTX 3080 10 gigabyte at $7.05. The RTX 3080 12 gigabyte at $6.04. And this is exactly why you need to take a look at charts like this. If you had your heart set on an RTX 3080 10 gigabyte and you weren't looking at anything else, you could seriously miss out on a really good deal or even worse, pay way more than what you should do for that card. And a really good example of this is the RTX 3080. Like I said, $7.05, but you could buy an RTX 3080 Ti which would actually cost you less money and get you a better experience. This is the same with AMD. The RX 6950 XT looking to be an excellent value at the top end for AMD. The only thing that beats it in the mid to high end is the RX 6800, which is still a great gaming experience, but comparing it to the 6800 XT, still 157 frames, nothing to scoff at at all. It's about 10 frames less per second than the RX 6950 XT. But then the thing that you have to remember is that the 6950 XT is on sale right now for $800, whereas the 6800 XT is selling for $879.99. Do you really want to pay more for less performance. What I was going to do is also go through this data in terms of the 4K experience, but I think the people playing at 4K and 4K high refresh, you kind of know what GPUs are in that power target and performance target. So what I'm going to do is throw up the data on screen for you now, just in case you don't. And this is all very much relatable to what we've been talking about today frames per second versus resolution, and also the cost per frame analysis in 4K. Which brings us onto the recommendations section. What I'm going to do is break things up into different price categories and give you a strong recommendation as to which GPU to buy. If you have up to $350, about $500, about $800 and 1000 and over, which GPUs should you get? Let's take a look. So although I will be giving recommendations for both AMD and Nvidia, as I understand that there are preferences either way in terms of CUDA support and other software features that Nvidia might have, but also bear in mind that AMD cards are a fantastic option if you don't need that for video editing, 3D modeling, CUDA support in terms of parallel programming. So for $350, what is my recommendation? Well, for AMD, you really should be looking no further than the RX 6650 XT. At $250, it is even cheaper than cards of lower performance in AMD's product stack. It offers a fantastic 1080p gaming experience while also being quite competent at 1440p. But for Nvidia, it's kind of a lot harder to give a solid recommendation. The card that is most comparable to the RX 6650 XT in terms of price is the RTX 3050 and that is a significant drop in performance compared to the 6650 XT, while also costing around $20 more. 
So to get a similar level of performance compared to the 6650 XT, you'd be looking at more like the RTX 3060 or 3060 Ti. But the 3060 Ti is still at its $400 MSRP and the 3060 is slightly over its MSRP. That is a lot more money for a lot less performance. So the thing that I want you to do is think long and hard whether you actually need Nvidia, the software suite and everything that comes with that. Because if you don't, if all that you do is game and stream, you are leaving a lot of performance off the table by going for Nvidia over AMD. So before we take a look at the confusing section of 800 and 1000 plus dollar GPUs, let's take a look at the $500 mark. For Nvidia, you are still looking at the RTX 3070 with a $500 MSRP, but a $510 card still available right now. It's going to offer you a fantastic 1080p gaming experience, but for 1440p, it's just a bit below what I would consider high refresh or mid to high refresh rate gaming. For AMD, you are looking at the RX 6800, which is a significantly more powerful GPU at exactly the same price. But then when we jump up to $800 and $1,000 and above, it it does come with a pretty big caveat. The RX 7900 XT and the XTX will be released within days of this video going live. So if you are ready to pull the trigger right now and hit buy, I would really consider holding off for a couple days and seeing if you can snag one of those. Look at the reviews before you do, make sure that you're covered in terms of performance and everything that you're expecting from the card being true but it is a huge thing to consider given that we are days away from it being released. But if you need a GPU right now, or for some reason, the RX 7900 XT and XTX doesn't meet your requirements or is a flop at launch, let's take a look at what $800 GPUs you should be considering right now. So in terms of $800, for Nvidia, they don't really have anything in that price range right at the moment in terms of the cards that we've seen. We have the RTX 3070 Ti at $730 right now, but then the next jump up is the RTX 3080 10 gigabyte at $979.99. That is way above what it should be. A staggering amount more than what it should be. I don't know what's happening with the stock of these, how Nvidia is playing with the pricing compared to 40 series, but something looks terribly off with those numbers and leads me to conclude that the the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte is probably going to be the better option at $900, which I still wouldn't consider a good deal right now, especially compared to the RX 6950 XT from AMD. At $800, that is a staggering price for that GPU, especially if all that you need is a rasterization performance, if all that you do is game and you're happy with the FSR technology and everything else within AMD software suite. But another thing to consider is also the used market. And I know it's not for everyone, but it is worth considering, especially when you compare the price to performance of that. And if done correctly, can be of great advantage to you. And if the used market does concern you, make sure that you check out how to buy a used GPU, where we go over the scams, how not to get ripped off, the buyer protections, and make sure that you are fully comfortable buying a GPU and know what to do as soon as you get it. So check that out by clicking here. And remember guys, share, like, subscribe. They are always appreciated. And I hope you have an amazing day.